Greetings, Miss Story Mystery here with another collection of creepy tales of mysteries and oddities from around the web. Please like and subscribe, and if you have any true stories that you would like to share, please reach out. For now, please sit back, get cozy, and enjoy. I was annoyed with my daughter because she hadn't cleaned her room in weeks. So when I walked by her room and saw her standing there, I assumed she was doing what I said. A few minutes later, she walked out of the shower in the bathroom with a towel wrapped around her and asked why I was looking at her strangely. When I asked her who was in her room, she looked scared too. I never figured out who that was, but they didn't clean up the room either. When I was in fourth or fifth grade, I got woken up by something. Someone was jumping on the foot of my bed. I sat up thinking it was my little brother. The jumping stopped, but my bed was still bouncing just a little bit before coming completely still. I was freaked out a bit, but I went back to sleep. The next night, it happened again. And this time, I stayed completely still. It definitely felt like someone was jumping on my bed. I sat up again, and it stopped. I told my mom the next morning, and she said something along the lines of, tell them to stop coming into your room and it'll stop. So, the next night, I was woken up by the jumping. I sat up and proclaimed to my empty room, stop jumping on my bed, I have to go to school, and went back to sleep. The next morning, I heard my mom talking to my dad, swearing she'd felt someone jumping on her bed. I work in a theater inside of a museum at least once a week, and every now and again I'll see backstage light up blue. We don't have blue lights. I keep checking the tech booth though, just in case. Worked as a night auditor at an old hotel. It was around 2 a.m. and I get a phone call from the pool room, which is supposed to be closed. I pick up the phone and answer, and all I hear is very heavy breathing. I hang up the phone and check the cameras, and all the lights are on in the pool room. So I go down the hallway to kick whoever it is out. But as I get close to the glass door, it is so cold I can see my breath. The door is completely fogged over, and all the lights are out. I open the door, and the light above me comes on because they are motion sensor lights. I am looking around, but I don't see anything. Then the light comes on across the pool from me, but nothing is there. Then every light in a path begins to light up around one side of the pool as if something is walking towards me. I ran out of there so fast and locked myself in my manager's office and stayed until sunrise. But the worst was yet to come. I had played it off in my head as bugs causing the motion sensor lights to go off. I was telling my manager about the experience so he would get a good laugh. When I told him about the phone call from the pool, he didn't laugh at all. He asked me if I was 100% positive the caller ID said the pool room, and I said, yeah. Then he told me there has been a phone in the pool room for 30 years. I told him there was no way because that would be physically impossible. He told me to go look for myself. I looked, and there was no phone. To this day, no matter how many ways I try to rationalize it, I just can't. It is completely unexplainable. So I was laying around in bed one night about a year ago and suddenly a voice said, Jenny? Then another said, no, this is not her. Then the first said, okay. I was alone. It was like someone was whispering it into my ear. Both female voices. It has scared me since. I sometimes question my sanity because of it. When I was a sophomore in high school, I came home one day to all the leftovers in the fridge eaten and the Tupperware left out by the sink. 
this was strange because no one was supposed to be home all day and we always clean the dishes before we go to bed, so it couldn't have been from the night before. When my parents, brother, and sister get home, I asked them if they had come home for lunch or whatever, and they all said no. So I told them about the food that was eaten, and they all said they had not eaten it. So to this day, I am convinced that there was someone living in our attic. My room is right below the attic, so at night, I can hear every sound that comes from up there. I occasionally hear very fast running. Sure, that could be an animal, but it doesn't explain the dirty dishes. I searched the attic for hours to be sure, but didn't find anything. Once when I was younger, I woke up in the middle of the night and saw a girl who looked like my sister in my room looking out the window. Odd, but so was my sister, so I paid it no mind and went back to sleep. In the morning, I remembered my sister hadn't been living at home for nearly two years already and the person I saw in the night was wearing a nightgown, which my sister never did. Chalked it up to a bad dream. About a week later, I woke up in the middle of the night again and saw her at the window. I hid under my blanket and tried to sleep, but I couldn't resist peeking once. She was looking at me now, her face level with mine at the side of my bed, and I had a loft bed at the time. Nothing like it has ever happened before or since. About two summers ago, I was really into hanging out with my friends at the local park after the sun went down on summer nights. Once, we got tired of just hanging around doing nothing and decided to go to this girl Kate's house to jump on her trampoline since she only lived a block away. We left the park and got to the end of the block and waited for a car to pass. Then, out of nowhere, four green lights, kind of like laser pointers, just came out of nowhere and surrounded us in a perfect rectangle. We all looked up, but nobody noticed anything unusual that could be creating the dots of light. They started moving around us, keeping their perfect rectangle formation. One flew over my toes, I was wearing flip-flops, and it felt really warm, like a light bulb you had just taken out. We all bolted to Kate's house after that, and nothing like it ever happened again. We had a rental house with a ghost in it. it. wasn't a bad ghost. He smelled like marijuana a bit, and he would come sit on the bed. Multiple tenants reported seeing the same thing. To this day, I still believe that I encountered a real glitch in the Matrix when I was younger. My parents and I were walking to the store and passed by an old lady that was barely walking. We went up three blocks without stopping and saw the same old lady barely moving on the block we were on. My parents were just as confused as me. It was ages ago, but I used to sleep in my sister's room because for some reason my room terrified me at night. Now every night we had the TV playing some random video to go to sleep to, and after the video ended it would just be static and usually either me or my sister would go and turn it off or replay the movie. One night I had been woken up by the sound of static and so I started to get up to turn it off when seemingly from the TV an angry woman's voice screamed at me to be quiet, go back to bed. This absolutely terrified me. I hid under my covers for what felt like hours until I fell asleep again. Now, fast forward about 10 years. I'm talking to my sister while playing some games and the topic of ghosts comes up and we joke around. We never believed anything like that and are still completely skeptical but I'll never forget the way her face paled after I told her that story and the way my heart raced when she told me that she remembered it too. This happened a couple summers ago. 
I usually take out the trash once a week at night after dinner, but I had forgotten one night, so I did it around 11.30 p.m. I opened the garage door to wheel out the trash can, and across the street from a distance, I saw a group of about five people dressed in all white walking down the street. My initial thought was that people were walking back from a neighbor's dinner party to their cars or something, except there was an eerie silence about it. I heard no chatter or even footsteps. I wheeled out the trash can and quickly walked the 30 feet down to place it for tomorrow's garbage collection. The group of people dressed in all white disappeared completely when I turned my head around the corner to get a closer look. Once I was with all my cousins and we were playing in the middle of the street of a cul-de-sac. We were all throwing small balls up in the air as high as we could to watch them just come back down and bounce. Because we were in the middle of the street, we were essentially in a wide open space, completely away from houses, trees, power lines, etc. Anyway, one of my cousins throws a small ball up in the air and it just doesn't come back down. We look up. All we see a sky. Okay, whatever. She must have thrown it at an odd angle and it bounced kind of far away and no one noticed it. About ten minutes pass and we've moved on to bouncing a basketball around. All of a sudden, that same little ball comes falling from the sky at the exact spot and direction she threw it. Our young minds came to the conclusion that my cousin was a little hulk and we never brought it up again. But I still sometimes wonder about that ball. I saw a unicorn. I was 11 and my mother and grandmother went to the park right before my grandma was going to move across the country. It was a happy sad day, feeding ducks at the little pond. I look up after my last handful of crumbs and across the water, standing in the sunlight, glowing, is a pure white horse. No rider, no saddle, and just gleaming in the sunlight with a horn. I couldn't talk. I looked over at Grandma because she's getting more breadcrumbs. She's standing there frozen, staring open-mouthed. I could barely whisper, Can you see it? She nods. I have no idea how a riderless white horse could get into this fenced park, appear suddenly, and then vanish into the trees. I asked Grandma years later if she was just humoring me and that she could be honest because I'm older now and I can take it. Her face got really serious. It was real. I really saw it. I used to go to an all-girls Christian camp. The cabin I was assigned when I was around 13 was apparently haunted by a camper that had passed away. For context, my bunk was a top bunk near the counselor's bed. This counselor this year had set up a few rows of books above her bed. I was having trouble sleeping on this particular night. I was in deep thought, and as my eyes wandered to the bookshelf, the books on the top fell to the floor all of a sudden. The strangest thing was that these books falling failed to wake anyone up, and we had wooden floors. As I'm thinking this is strange, I look directly across from me, and there is a white, shadowy figure of a little girl sitting on the top bunk of a different camper. I didn't feel any initial fear. I felt extremely safe. She looked like she was just watching this girl sleep as almost a protector. I wake up the next morning and recall the events I witnessed. A lot of people didn't believe me, but as curious 13-year-olds, a few girls agreed to night watch for a couple more nights and see if the figure would return. We began to catch on to the pattern, and she did return. She moved sitting from each bunk every single night, including mine, just watching us sleep. She disappeared after she had hit the last bunk. When I was 23 or so, I was staying with my parents over a break. It was 10 or 11 at night, 
and I was the only one awake. I was getting ready for bed, and there came this feeling that is hard to describe. You know when you've had an argument and someone just pisses you off and you feel like a hate from them? Almost like a pressure, even after they've long walked away, but you know they just hate your guts? I began to feel that. I felt like this hatred for me all of a sudden, and this pressure, like there was a presence in the room. There was a chair in the corner of the room, and I just kept feeling this feeling radiating out at me from that part of the room, like the air in the room was displaced, pushing towards me, like someone was taking up that part of the room. The hairs on my arms stood on end, my breath was shallow, and my heart pounded like a freight train. It was indescribable. I hate to wax religious, but if the devil could be sitting in my room, it would have felt like that. The room seethed at me. Strangest, most unsettling experience. Probably some form of panic attack, but unsettling nonetheless. When I was young, I was over at my cousin's house. She and I were talking at the dining room table in the early afternoon. All of a sudden, a drop of blood the size of a small green bean lands on the back of my hand that was laid on the table. We were both astonished. It smelled copperish like blood, so we assumed maybe a mosquito ate too much and exploded in midair. Still think about it from time to time. When my third child was not yet a year old, we had him sleeping in a bassinet in our room so as not to disturb his brother, who he would eventually share a room with. One night his father, now my ex, had gone out with a particularly rowdy cousin and would be out until nearly dawn. It's right at midnight. The kids and I were all sleeping when suddenly every electronic toy in the room started going off. I sat straight up in bed trying to see if I was dreaming it. Nope. Lights and sounds and they're all going off. After about a minute, minute and a half, I got up to turn on the light. They all shut off. Mind you, for the previous three years, I kept feeling like I'd see the shadow of a two-year-old going into my son's room late at night. My mind is spinning, not wanting to believe in the supernatural, searching for a logical explanation and coming up short. I took all of the electronic toys and put them in the closet. Before I turned off the lights and went back to bed, I decided not to risk it and said, I understand you want to play, but it's past bedtime and he needs his sleep. I didn't sleep again for the rest of the night, and nothing similar has ever happened again. So there was this one time I was hanging out with my boyfriend of the time and he took me home. My parents' window faced the front of the house where the driveway is. I saw my mom looking out the window and she waved to me and I waved back. I can tell when my parents are watching TV in their room and the TV light was on in the room. I opened the garage and the family car was gone, the one we typically drive the most when we're going out together, and I just thought my dad went out with his friends and took the family car and my mom stayed home. I walked inside, and no light was on, even in my parents' room. And my mom wasn't home. They both went out together. I still cannot explain who was waving at me. Well, that was another collection of creepy tales, mysteries, and oddities from around the web. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any true creepy tales that you would like to share, please email me at itsmizstorymystery at gmail.com. Also, please like and subscribe, and I'll be back with more stories soon. Bye for now!